In today's video, we're going to talk about invariance and monovariance. So invariance are things that don't change. Variant means change, and in means not. So this is things that don't change. Whereas monovariance are things that change, but only one of them, mono meaning one. So we're going to solve a few problems by looking for things that either don't change or change in a manageable way where one particular thing that we observe changes and it will allow us to get insight on how to solve the problem. So let's dive right into a motivating example. In this example, I want to look at an 8x8 eight eight chessboard. And what we're going to do is try to tile this chessboard with dominoes. And dominoes come in two types, 2x1 two vertical dominoes and 2x1 horizontal dominoes. Now, if you ask the question, can we tile this grid with these dominoes? The answer is an overwhelming yes, and there are many ways to do this. For example, we could do it just with vertical tiles by doing the following. Taking the first two rows, tiling them vertically, and then doing the same thing for the next pair of rows, etc. We could also do this horizontally instead. Okay, but now we're going to add an interesting twist to this problem. What if we change the board in a way so that we cut out the two corners? We still have an even number of total cells. We had 64 before because it's an 8x8 eight eight grid, so we have 62 left. The question is, is it possible to tile this with dominoes? For example, we could place one domino like this and another one over here like this, and maybe there's a way to complete this diagram and get a tiling using these two tiles. Okay, you might even think to do this sort of in a systematic way, where you start by tiling this area horizontally and continue and then notice that you're stuck at the end, so you have to tile vertically over here and maybe continue in some fashion. Now what we're gonna do is make some observations to decide whether or not this is possible. You might try and play around with this and notice you'll get stuck in trying to do this, but there actually is a way to definitively determine whether or not this is even possible. And it has to do with looking for something that does not change. So what I'd like to do is take a look at an actual chessboard where we have the cells colored and thinking about what would happen if we get rid of the two corner cells like we did in the previous situation. So again, we have two types of tiles, the two by one dominoes. If we place one on the board, whether or not it's vertical or horizontal, you might notice something that it takes up exactly one white square and one black square. We see that no matter which way we lay the domino down. So one thing we could keep track of in a chart is the number of black and white cells that we have left as we continue our tiling. At first, in the full chessboard, there are 32 of each color, but because we eliminated two opposite corners, we only have 30 white squares left and still 32 black squares. Now say we start our tiling with a randomly placed vertical domino. We've covered one white and one black cell. So of the untiled spaces, there are 31 remaining black ones and 29 remaining white ones. Similarly, if we place the next horizontal tile somewhere, we'll have 30 black untouched squares left and 28 white. So we notice that there is something that does not change. No matter what, as we keep placing dominoes, the number of black tiles remaining available is always two more than the number of white ones. So our invariant is the quantity B minus W, the number of black minus the number of white squares remaining as we tile, and that number is always two. Okay, but if we could possibly tile this entire thing, at the end, we'd have all our spaces covered. So the number of black minus the number of white spaces left uncovered would be zero. They'd actually each have to be zero. 
But we've just argued that that's impossible, no matter how we tile b minus w is 2. So it's impossible to actually tile this board with these two types of dominoes. Cool idea, looking at things that don't change. Now we want to take a look at different problems where we have things that might change, but in a controllable way where one specific thing changes, and that'll allow us to get insight on how to solve our problem. Okay, so for this next problem, imagine you're given the numbers 1 through 100 written on a wall. And you start the following procedure. At any step, you're allowed to erase any two random numbers, say A and B. But when you cross them out from your list, you need to replace them by a new number, the number A plus B minus 1. The question that you're left with is, after you do this 99 times, now let's think about this for a second, you'll have two things that you erase and replace with one. So the number of things in your list will decrease by one each time. So after 99 steps, you're going to be only left with one number because you started with 100 numbers. The question is, what number actually remains at the end? What is that lone number left? Now you might think, oh, this is difficult to predict. Maybe we can get conditions on the number. Maybe there are multiple possibilities. Well, instead of starting with a huge list like this, let's actually look at an example where we start with the numbers just 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, employ the process, and see what plot possibilities that we actually get. So here we'll start by picking two random numbers, say A and B. And as we mentioned, we replace them by crossing them out and then replace by the sum minus 1 and the sum minus 1 this in this case is 6. So we'll do this again. I'll pick these two as our random numbers. Their sum is 5 minus 1 is 4. So we're left with 3, 4, 6. All right, one more time. Erase these and replace by their sum minus 1, which is 9. And then their sum minus 1 here, which is 11. So we end up with 11 as our end result. Okay, let's try this on this other column and maybe do it quickly, but in a different way. Lo and behold, we end up with 11 again. So it seems like at least in these two examples, it didn't matter what path we took, we ended up with the same number at the end. So I wonder if we can keep track of one thing that changes, a monovariant, in order to determine what this final number is. Okay, so at any step, we erase the two numbers a and b and replace by a plus b minus 1. What's the difference between these two? So here, this contributes a and b to the total list. And now we're replacing that by a plus b minus 1. So there's actually a predictable change in the sum of the numbers that we have in our list. At any step, if we have s as the sum of the numbers in the list, then erasing a and b will be subtracting a and b from that list, and subsequently subtracting it from the sum. Then we add in the number a plus b minus 1. And so the total net effect is we subtract the sum by 1. So we can keep track of a list. The sum of the list and the number of integers in the list. We start off with a sum which we'll call s which is 1 plus 2 all the way up to 100. The list has 100 elements in it. Now by the argument we just employed, when we do our first move of selecting a and b randomly and replacing them by a plus b minus 1, the list sum decreases by 1, and the number of elements in the list is 99. Now, do the, doing this again, picking random a and b, and subtracting them off, and replacing by a plus b minus 1, we'll have a total of s minus 1 minus 1, which is s minus 2, and a list with 98 elements in it. So as we continue, if we look at this pattern, when we're left with exactly one number in the list, the total sum of the elements in the list is s minus 99. Okay, but if we have one number left in the list, then that's the number that we end up with at the end. So that number must be s minus 99, which is this sum here, 
subtract 99, an actual definitive number that we can compute. In fact, this is some of the numbers from 1 to 98, with 99 then released from this sum and adding 100. So a cool way to figure out this process and figure out the number that remains by keeping track of one variable, in this case, the sum of the list. We'll finish off today with a really interesting problem that's a cool application of monovariance. Say you have an infinite strip of squares, and it's infinite in both directions. You have a finite number of stones that are placed on these different squares. So for example, you might have a situation like this, where you have stones placed only in these five squares, and the number of stones are shown here. Okay, at any step, you're allowed to do the following process. Pick up two stones at the same location if it's possible. So for example, you can't pick up two stones here, but you could here, or here, or here, or here. And then once you do that, you move one stone to the left and one to the right. So for instance, you could move this stone over here and this stone over here, leaving you with a configuration like this. So the question is, is it possible to return to your original configuration after a finite number of steps? So if you think about this process, you're taking two stones and moving them away in different directions. So you're spreading the center of mass of these stones all together. Now, is there a way to quantify that? Well, we can by doing the following. We'll select a random square to label as zero. And then, since we're infinite in both directions, we'll label the squares with positive integers to the left and negative integers to the right. Now, a way to quantify, particularly the distance or spread of these different stones is to label each one of these stones with a weight. And the weight is gonna be what we'll call n sub i squared. The reason for squaring will become clear in a minute. And that's gonna be i squared, the label of the particular cell that a given stone is in. Okay, so for example, in this current configuration, each of these stones would have weight one. This would have weight two squared, which is four. This three squared, which is nine, 16 for this. And then these would have weight one and all of these individual stones would have weight nine. So the reason for squaring is to keep track of distance. So the further you are this way should have the same balancing effect overall as the distance you are in this direction. Okay, so what is our monovariant here? At any point in any particular stage of our process, we're gonna let x be the sum of all of these n sub i squareds. So imagine this is our original configuration. If so, we'll get three copies of one squared and two copies of negative one squared, then one copy of each of two squared, three squared, and four squared, and finally, four copies of negative three squared. Okay, so what's interesting about this is the following. Say at a current stage that our total weight is x. Now we have some square labeled i, and we have some two stones that we decide to move. One moves to the right and one to the left. Their contribution to the current weight is i squared plus i squared. But now we're going to replace this with one of them moving to a spot whose weight is i plus one and the other one moving to a spot with weight i minus one. And so the total change is gonna be the difference between this quantity here and this quantity here. The original contribution of these two stones was two i squared. Now the contribution is the sum of these two quantities which is i squared minus 2i plus 1 plus i squared plus 2i plus 1, which is 2i squared plus 2. So if at our current stage, our total sum of weights is x, then our next stage, the total sum of weights is x plus 2 because of this change that happened 
right over here. So no matter what, our monovariant, the sum of the squares of the weights of our stones, is going to be changing by 2 at each step in the positive direction. It's going to be increasing by 2 at each step. So if we go back to our original question, can we return to the original configuration after a finite number of steps? Well, if we could, then the weight that we'd have at the beginning would be the same as the weight we'd have at the end. But that's impossible because every time we move two stones, the weight increases by two. So this is not possible. This is a really interesting and creative type of monovariant, but then Tuition comes from thinking about the spread of points and finding a way to account for that using distance. So a few examples of cool problems that use things that don't change or things that can change but are controllable using one particular statistic.